Today we're going to be ranking every single card in Clash Royale. We don't need a long intro, you know what's going on. The rankings will be grouped into six tiers, F to S. Every single card that has an evolution is automatically involved. So we only have 110 cards instead of 123. Last thing to note, everything I say here is completely objective and correct. If you disagree with me, you're just wrong. Starting in F tier with card 110 is the Barb Hut. The Barb Hut is god awful and by far the worst card in the game right There's now. There's literally nothing you can use it in. Next is card 109, which is the Furnace. The Furnace is once again terrible. There's not a single meta card that you can use it in. And even in low ladder, it's just terrible. At card 108 is the Goblin Hut. The Goblin Hut is once again very, very bad. All three of these spawners are by far the three worst cards in the game. There's nothing you can use them. At card 107 is the clone spell. The clone spell is a meme card. It's not really meant to be great. I guess you can clone some giant skeletons. You can clone some skeleton barrels, but outside of that, it's just off. At card 106 is the mirror. The mirror is another meme card that's just not very good. Very bad outside of like broken card meta. So right now that there isn't an insanely broken card that you can mirror, it's just gonna sit at the bottom of the list. At 105 is the wizard. The wizard is a mid ladder menace card but really, when you get better at the game, it's an awful card. I know a lot of you guys are going to get mad at me for saying this, but it is one of the worst cards in the game. And number 104 is the Witch. The Witch is a terrible mid ladder card, just like the Wizard. I think it's slightly better than the Wizard because you can occasionally get value from the skeletons, but it's still a very bad card overall. And number 103 is the Cannon Card. The Cannon Card is not that bad of a card, but really, it's just not a great card either. It kind of sits right in that middle range, but it's very clunky, so it has to move all the way down this list. If you find the right deck for the cannon card which happens about once every two years it can be an all right card but i can't put it much higher on the list because it doesn't fit into any and number 102 is the rocket the rocket has fallen so far it used to be one of the most annoying cards in the game in a win condition the log bait used to be so much better but ever since it got huge nerfs it has fallen so far on these rankings and number 101 is the minion horde the minion horde is just a really really bad card with how many arrows are running around with how many poisons are running around it just you can't ever get value from the car. At number 100 is the Rascals. I like the Rascals a lot, but they really don't fit into many decks. They can fit into Log Bait occasionally, it can fit into some Mortar decks, but really it's just not very good. It's really clunky just like the Cannon Cart, but they can get slightly more value than the Cannon Cart. Just not a great card overall though. And at number 99 is the Three Musketeers. The Three Musketeers is the only win condition down in the F tier, and it is clearly the worst win condition in the game right they now. They just can't get any value anymore because there's so many counters to them in the meta. They really struggle without an evolution and i can't even imagine what that's going to be like starting out the d tier with number 98 the heal spirit the heal spirit is by far the worst spirit in clash royale it's really only seen in eagle and three musketeers and neither of those decks are very good at number 97 is the battle healer the battle healer is only used inside of eagle and occasionally golem and it's just not a great card it has no versatility and is in a major major need for it to get an evolution at number 96 is the elixir golem the elixir golem is one of the worst win conditions inside of clash royale it's just spam and completely no skill so i'm glad it's really bad but it's just not a great call and number 95 is the mega minion the mega minion is the little brother of the phoenix even though the phoenix is no longer a top tier card it is still drastically better than the mega minion the mega minion needs an evolution to change it up a bit and number 94 is the inferno tower the inferno tower is great at taking out tanks but there's so many royal recruit and just overall spam decks that makes it pretty much useless in the meta. number 92 is the expo the expo might be really annoying to play against but it is honestly not a great card right now it might mess up my graveyard decks but outside of that it really gets hard countered a ton and number 91 is the ram rider the ram rider seems like it's going to get an evolution here pretty soon from a sneak peek we got a couple of months ago but it's still just not a great card right now. it might be all right to some of the other win conditions that i've already listed but it's very hard to get it to the tower so it doesn't do as much damage as like the hog rider does and number 91 is the zappies the zappies are one of my favorite cards in clash royale they're just not great with all the evolved firecrackers evolved archers and just other evolved support troops the zappies use rate has tanked. And number 90 is the hunter. Just like the zappies, the hunter use rates have fallen drastically. It is now some of the lowest in the game. It used to be really good inside a royal giant. But with all the other support troops getting evolutions, the hunter really needs to get one to compete with. And number 89 is the princess. The princess has fallen from grace. It used to be one of the best cards in the game, but log bait is awful right now. Since the goblin barrel has been nerfed multiple times, the princess use rates have tanked and it's really useless outside of that deck. And number 88 is the prince. 
Double Prince is not great right now, and neither is Prince Bait. So the Prince really has no deck to be in. I don't think it's a bad card, it just doesn't have any decks to play in right now. At number 87 is the Ice Golem. The Ice Golem is really only useful in Loon Cycle and Hog Cycle. Outside of those decks, it's pretty much useless. With this being said, those two decks are a lot more than some of the cards below would have. I don't think it's a great card, but it's at least used, so it gets a little bit higher than the list than what you would expect. Number 86 is the Goblin Barrel. The Goblin Barrel has been nerfed numerous times. It used to be one of the best cards in the game, but after all these nerfs, it has dropped far. At number 85 is the Freeze. The Freeze used to be way lower on this list, but it is raised a little bit because Lumberloon Freeze and Graveyard Freeze are played quite often nowadays. Just being played gets you a lot higher on this list than what you'd expect. In the future, the Freeze will probably drop down again on this list, but for right now, it's doing quite well. And number 84 is the Elite Barbarians. The Elite Barbarians are nowhere near as good as a lot of mid-bladder players think, but they're still not terrible. They do a lot of damage, but then again, they're not versatile and they're very expensive for what they And number 83 is the Flying Machine. With how good the Royal Recruits are right now, the Flying Machine actually is getting some usage. I don't think it's a great card overall, but it's good for Fireball Bait and it just does a lot of damage and it's just really freaking annoying. And number 82 is the Skeleton Army. The Skeleton Army is a great swarm that does a ton of damage for a cheap cost. It's more known as a mid-ladder card, but out Outside of that, it's actually not a terrible card. And number 81 is a Giant Skeleton. The Giant Skeleton is a good tank that does a bunch of damage. There's nothing really else to say. It's not a great card, but it's not a bad card. It's kind of in that middle tier. And number 80 is the Lava Hound. The Lava Hound has been one of the best win conditions in Clash Royale for a long time, but it's not doing very well right now. With all the spammy decks running around that can beat the Lava Hound, you can't really put it much higher than number 80 on this list. And number 79 is the Golem. The Golem is right next to the Lava Hound because it has the same exact issue. It gets completely completely smeared by hog riders and there's just so much of that spammy stuff running around it can't really compete and number 78 is the executioner there's just so many better cards like the evolved firecracker than the executioner but once again with all the spammy stuff running around the executioner can hold its own it is kind of outclassed by some of the other support troops right now but if that wasn't an issue it'd probably be much higher on this list and number 77 is the night witch the night witch isn't a great card but you see it in a bunch of decks right now this is much higher than it used to be and i think it's a pretty good spot for the night starting out the c tier with number 76 the spear goblins the spear goblins are good with minor and a lot of those spam decks just not used in very many decks right now. and number 75 is the fire spirit the fire spirit is the second worst spirit in the game right now. it used to be much better but after a nerf it's not used near as much and number 74 is the electro spirit the electro spirit is slightly better than the fire spirit but it's much worse than the ice spirit it deserves this middle spot and number 73 is the ice wizard the ice wizard probably needs a buff or an evolution it used to be much better it's great at defense but it dying to fireball and just being really squishy overall puts it down on this list and number 72 is the magic archer the magic archer is one of the most annoying cards in clash royale to play against it always seems to get damage on your tower no matter what you do i'm so glad it got nerfed and it's no longer used near as much as it used to because i was about to throw my phone through the wall if i played another one of these stupid things and number 71 is the electro giant the electro giant has gotten nerfed multiple times and it's not near as good as it used to be just like a lot of these cards that are lower on this list it's still a decent win condition it's just not as good as a lot of the top tier ones. And number 70 is the Battle Ram. The Battle Ram is getting a little bit more usage after the P.E.K.K.A. buff, but it's still not an amazing card. It's a pretty mid-tier card, which is where the ranking is. And number 69 is the Dark Goblin. The Dark Goblin is once again very annoying, just not a very great card. It deserves an evolution to get up into that top tier like it used to be. And number 68 is the Goblin Cage. I think a lot of people underrate the Goblin Cage. A lot of people have them in like the mid 80s. I think the Goblin Cage is a very good card. With all the wall breakers and spammy stuff, that Goblin Brawler can be very powerful once it dies. And number 67 is the Mini P.E.K.K.A. A lot of you mid ladder players overrate the heck out of this card, but it is a mid-tier to lower mid-tier card. That's about as good as it is. It's not much better than that. Number 66 is the Lumberjack. The Lumberjack is pretty good with the Bloom, but outside of that, it's not great. It can occasionally be used in Golem, but it's a very mid card. And number 65 is the Skeleton Barrel. The Skeleton Barrel used to be much lower on this list, but it is a pretty decent card nowadays. With all the Royal Recruits running around and all the bait decks, it actually rised up this list pretty far. And number 64 is a Tombstone. The Tombstone was the best building in Clash Royale for a really long time. It's just fallen really far because of how good the Tesla, Bomb Tower, and other buildings are. Number 63 is the Giant. The Giant is very good right now because of how good Giant Graveyard is. The Graveyard did just get nerfed, so I would assume it's going to fall a little bit on this list, but it's still a very decent card. And number 62 is the Golden Knight. I think the Golden Knight is better than a lot of people think, especially after this most recent buff, but it's still a mid card compared to some of the other champions. And number 61 is the Monk. 
The monk also just got buffed, so it's a pretty good champion. I think it's actually a lot better than a lot of people think it is. Once again, just like the golden knight, it's just not as good as a lot of those top tier champions. At number 60 is Sparky. I think the Sparky is one of the most overrated cards in Clash Royale right now. Especially after the goblin giant nerf, it's just not great. A lot of you people just complain to complain about it. It's very easy to defend. At number 59 is the Phoenix. The Phoenix was one of the best cards in the history of Clash Royale. It took about 29 nerfs to get here, but it's finally a balanced mid card. At number 58 is the P.E.K.K.A. After this most recent P.E.K.K.A. buff, she's actually decent. She was a mid 80s card, but now she raked all the way up into the 50s. That is insanely good for her. At number 57 is the Mother Witch. I absolutely hate this woman as a graveyard player, but she really is just a balanced card. There isn't a much more balanced card than the Mother Witch. At number 56 is the Inferno Dragon. The Inferno Dragon is great at taking down those big tanks, but it just struggles against some of those swarms, so it stays in that mid tier. At number 55 is the Electro Wizard. The Electro Wizard is most likely going to see more usage with how much the P.E.K.K.A. is being used right now. Hopefully the resurgence of P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam will bring back some of these P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam cards. At number 54 is the Royal Hogs. I don't think the Royal Hogs are as good as the Hog Riders, so they have to be in this moderate tier, but they're still very good. At number 53 is the Dark Prince. The Dark Prince is much better than the regular Prince because of his splash damage and his charging ability. It's just not in a really good deck right now. Double Prince is not as good as it used to be, and outside of that, there's just much better options. At number 52 is the Mortar. I really don't think the Evolved Mortar is that good at all. There's just so many Royal Recruits, so much spammy stuff that beats the living crap out of them. I already know that this is going to be controversial to everyone, but the Evolved Mortar is honestly a mid-tier card. At number 51 is the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie Evolution is one of the worst evolutions in the game right now. She's a decent card without her evolution, but she just gets outclassed by a lot of the other mini tank cards. At number 50 is the cannon. The cannon is just a very good and balanced building. There's nothing else to it. It is ranked right smack dab in the middle of the ranking. At number 49 is the baby dragon. The baby dragon is once again, just a very, very balanced card. There's not much else to say about it. And number 48 is the Giant Snowball. The Giant Snowball is a decent spell, but it's just nowhere close to the top tier spells in the game. Starting off the B tier with number 47, the Elixir Pump. The Elixir Pump is one of the highest use rate cards in Clash Royale right now, which is kind of crazy to me. It can only really be stopped by the Miner or Earthquake for a positive Elixir trade, so it just becomes a very valuable card. And number 46 is the Skeleton Dragons. Some of you people think that the Skelly Drags are one of the worst cards in the game. This is not true. They are an above average card. At number 45 is the lightning spell. The lightning spell might be on the lower end of spells, but it is still a great card overall. It is definitely an above average card. At number 44 is the Archer Queen. After the most recent Archer Queen buff, she is now an above average card. She still isn't comparable to the Little Prince, but she is much better than she was there for a bit. At number 43 is the Goblin Gang. The Goblin Gang is good because there's a whole bunch of spammy crap in the meta right now. Basically, anything that you can spam at the bridge is going to be a good card. The Goblin Gang fits in that category. At number 42 is the minions. The minions were very good when the goblin giant was good, but they're still good now after the goblin giant nerf. They can be used in so many different decks, and just because they're an air card, they can be a pain in the butt to count. At number 41 is the evolved royal giant. The evolved royal giant might be on the lower end of evolutions, but it's still a great card overall. He's very annoying to stop, and you can't really kill him with swarms like you can the regular royal giant. At number 40 is the musketeer. The musketeer is one of the most balanced cards in Clash Royale. She's a great support troop that doesn't die to fight. Fireball. That is really important, but she can't really compare it to the Little Prince, which knocks her a little bit from where she normally would be. At number 39 is the Evolved Barbarians. The Evolved Barbarians used to be one of the best cards in the game, but once again, just like the Royal Giant, it's on the lower end of evolution. He's much easier to kill than some of the other evolutions, but those things still do a ton of damage if they hit something. At number 38 is the Electro Dragon. The Electro Dragon is one of the most underrated cards in Clash Royale. It is very, very good at stopping any kind of charging troop, and honestly, stopping any kind of tank coming down the lane. He just sits there in the air, it's very difficult to kill, and just slows everything down. At number 38 is the Earthquake. The Earthquake is very good with Hogs and even Electro Giants. It's very good at taking out pumps and buildings, but outside of that, it's not great at taking out some of those medium health troops that are really important to take out right now. At number 37 is the Graveyard. The Graveyard nerf that we just got was one of the most random nerfs I've ever seen Supercell do. Either way, I'm going to have to deal with it as a Graveyard player, even though I don't agree with it. At number 36 is the Skeleton King. The Skeleton King is completely overshadowed by the Little Prince, which makes people not understand how good the card actually is. It is 
still a great card in Clash Royale right now. And number 34 is the Bandit. The Bandit is going to get a huge increase in use rate because of the P.E.K.K.A. Bump. It's just a great card to spam at the bridge and it's a pain in the butt to deal with. At number 33 is the Royal Ghost. The Royal Ghost, along with the Bandit, is going to get a huge lift from the P.E.K.K.A. Bump. It is just another great card to spam at the bridge. It's a great defensive card and it's just a pain in the butt to deal with when you're low on Elixir. At number 32 is the Goblin Giant. Even after the Goblin Giant nerf, it is still a great card. It is an above average win condition and a lot of people don't realize that. It might not be a 30% use rate card anymore, but it's still a very, very good win condition. And number 31 is the Barbarian Barrel. The Barbarian Barrel doesn't get used as much as I think it should, but it's still a very good card. It might not be on the same level as like the Log, Arrows, or Evolved Zap, but it's still a very good spell. And number 30 is the Mighty Miner. The Mighty Miner is still, once again, a very good champion. It's completely overshadowed by the Little Prince, but what isn't at this point? The Mighty Miner is very good at taking out tanks, it's a very good tank in itself, and it's just a very good card. And number 29 is the Mega Knight. This might piss y'all off, but the Mega Knight is a very good card. It's a very good tank, it's very good on defense, and honestly, it's very good with counter push potential. It might not be as good as some of you mid ladder players think, but it's still a very good card overall. And at number 28 is the Rage. The Rage spell is a very good card with the Goblin Giant, with the Wall Breakers, with the Mega Knight, just about everything. It's just a very versatile spell. It might not be as good as a lot of people think. It might not be as bad as a lot of people think, but it's a great card. Starting off the A tier with number 27, the Guards. The Guards buff was one of the best buffs I've ever seen Supercell do. It is a very good card now, just not a top tier card. And number 26 is the Bowler. The Bowler's use rates skyrocketed after the Little Prince was introduced. It is a great counter to the Little Prince, and until he is completely out of the meta, the Bowler use rates are not going to drop back to normal levels. And number 25 is the Goblins. The Goblins nerf that it got a couple of balance changes ago have knocked it down much further than I thought they would be. I thought they would still be a top 10 card in the game. They are no longer that. And number 24 is the Fireball. The Fireball is a very good spell, it's just not as good as the Poison. So it's still a very good card, just not in the top tier. And number 23 is the Hog Rider. The Hog Rider is a very good card, it's just not as good as some of you all think. Some of you all think the Hog Rider is the best card in the game. That's just not true. And number 22 is the Fisherman. The Fisherman is one of the most underrated cards in the game. It's just very, very good in so many different decks. And number 21 is the Evolved Royal Recruits. The Royal Recruits used to be one of the best evolutions in the game. They're still very good, and they used to be used in much more decks. The use rate is down to 6 or 7%, which is probably what it's going to end up being long term. And number 20 is the Goblin Drill. I was saying that the Goblin Drill was underrated for months now, and everyone disagreed with All me. All it took was for the Evolved Bomber to be added to the game for everyone to see how good it actually is. And number 19 is the Royal Delivery. The Royal Delivery is a very good spell. It is very good at taking out a bunch of swarmy crap, and it just does so much damage for a spell. It's kind of ridiculous. And number 18 is the Bomb Tower. The Bomb Bomb Tower is such a good building. It's so good at taking out swarms, and it just has so much health compared to the other building. And number 17 is the Tesla. The Tesla is very good, and it just got an evolution. Why are we giving evolutions to very good buildings? I don't know, but now it's even better. And number 16 is the Balloon. The Balloon is a very good win condition that no one really talks about. It's very, very difficult to stop in Lava Loon and just Loon Cycle decks. It's a very good card. And number 15 is the Ice Spirit. The Evolved Ice Spirit is kind of useless compared to the regular Ice Spirit. The regular Ice Spirit is used much more than the Evolved Ice Spirit, but it's just a really good card overall. It's used in so many Cycle decks and so many non-Cycle decks too that it's really hard not to put it this high on the list. And number 14 is the Tornado. The Tornado is no longer the best card in the game. It's just still a very, very good card. People think it should be nerfed. I think that's kind of ridiculous. It is around where it should be. And at number 13 is the Miner. The Miner is a very good card, one of the best win conditions in the game. It's just not in the top 10 like some people think it should be. Starting off the S tier with number 12, the Evolved Archers. The Evolved Archers used to be the best card in the game, but after a couple of nerfs, it's no longer the best card in the game, but it is still a great support card. And number 11 is the Evolved Firecracker. The Evolved Firecracker, just like the Evolved Archers, doesn't die to arrows, which is huge for the support cards right now with how many arrows are running around. It's still one of the best cards in the game and very annoying to deal with. And number 10 is the Evolved Wall Breakers. For some reason, I just can't seem to learn how to counter these things. They're so annoying to deal with if you don't have a building, and it's one of the most underrated cards in the game. And number 9 is the Poison Spell. The Poison Spell is so good as a spell right now. It can kill the Little Prince, which just immediately makes it a top tier card. It is by far the cheapest way to deal with that stupid little card, and that's why it becomes a top tier card. And number 8 is the Evolved Bats. The Bats themselves are a great card. When you evolve them, 
they become completely broken. You have to arrows or fireball the evolved bats at any time, which just makes them super annoying and creates a whole bunch of unfair elixir trades. And number seven is the log. The log used to be by far the best card in the game. I don't think I've ever put it outside of my top three. Now it's not even a top two spell. That might sound crazy. It's still a top 10 card in the game, but in my opinion, it's not a top two spell. And number six is the arrows. The arrows are a great card because they kill a lot of the swarmy craft that the log can't kill. They hit air, they're able to kill the evolved bats. They can kill firecrackers, archers, which are all over the place. They just can't kill the evolved form of those cards and they can't really do enough damage to the musketeer or archer queen to do much. And number five is the Evolved Bomber. The Evolved Bomber is nowhere near as broken after its nerf, but it's still one of the most broken cards in the game. It is so freaking good. And number four is the Evolved Zap. Just a heads up, we are recording this on the day the Evolved Zap was released, so it's not really in the meta yet. So I don't know 100% how this is going to end up, but I still think this thing is going to be insanely broken. The Evolved Zap looks like it can stop just about every single card in the game. It looks insanely broken. And number three is the Evolved Skeletons. When the Evolved Skellies are split, it's near impossible to stop without a spell. You have to spell one side and pray that you have a splash card for the other side or else your towers are completely gone. Like you get three card by one elixir card. And number two is the Evolved Knight. The Evolved Knight, even after 70 nerfs, is still one of the best cards in the game. It's damn near unstoppable and I don't think without about seven more nerfs, it's ever going to fall from the top five. And at number one is the Little Prince. The Little Prince is just obnoxiously broken. Even after 77 and a half nerfs, it's still obnoxiously broken. It's going to probably need a complete rework before it even becomes close to balanced.